I was born and raised and still live here. Yeah. And uh, I used to live with both parents. Oh. My mom with my dad. In this same place? In this place. Wow. Then, uh, actually, um, I lost my dad when I was about 26 years. I was born in 1989. Right. And at the age of six years, I lost my dad. And uh, so I've been all along living with my mom. Mm. My mom was a nanny, doing mm. nanny jobs yeah. outskirts of Kibera. Okay. And um, she had to sacrifice a lot, a lot mm. to ensure that at least I become a person that I am today. Yeah. So she had to self good food, good clothing, to invest in me in terms of education. Yeah. So she took me to school in Kibera for eight years. Mm. Then after eight years, I was able to join some high school uh, outskirts of Kibera. Mm. And, um, and uh, later on, I joined some high school mm. for four years. Mm. Then later on, I joined some city college where I took a diploma in mm. nice. development studies. Nice, you, you got a degree. Then coming back to my roots, Kibera, mm. I saw things from different perspective. So for me, I was sort of like a solution oriented. Yeah. Instead of like asking questions, for me it was like, how do I, how do we do come together as a community to do whatever better. we can do? My slogan has always been our community, our solution. Mm -hmm. I always tell myself that each day, even if I'm able just to give two percent, even if I'm just able like to touch one or two lives, mm -hmm. I call that success. Mm -hmm. So little efforts or little things done by many people together, you put it together, mm -hmm. chances are it's going to overwhelm the world. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now. Um, my mom had to go back in Mombasa. Mm. That is my rural home. Mombasa, your friend. Yes. Mm. And uh, before she retired, she was given these coaches by an employer. Mm. Now she could not bring this with her to Mombasa. Then she mm. gave it to me. So before we brought them here, we had to break the door mm. and part of the wall to allow this to get inside here. Yeah. Now she lives in Mombasa. Now I live here with my family. I have um, a partner. She's called Phyllis. Mm. And two children. Mm. The children are Johnson and Aaron. Mm. Johnson is five years. Aaron is one year, two months old. Your partner, you guys are married? What? Your partner, you guys are married? Um, it's not really official, yeah, but, but uh, traditionally. Yes. You know the traditional kind of marriage, yes, right? Marriage. And um, uh, they don't live here anymore at the moment mm -hmm. because uh, when my partner had the baby, it was mm -hmm. through the cat, cesarean. Mm -hmm. When you look at the environment here, it's not conducive. Mm -hmm. So she's been like sleeping more five times. Mm -hmm. She walks, she sleeps off. She hurts the wound, then it opens up, then some discharge comes out. That is why I had to relocate her yes. at my aunt place. So now she's living there until she recuperates such that once she heals, then she's going to get back here to proceed with her lives. Now if she's back with the kids, she and the small kid will sleep there. Then my elder son Johnson will connect this to be a bed for him to sleep. Then Moses sleeps on the other couch because the space is tiny. And uh, at least we have to utilize whatever we have at our disposal. Right over there, that is where we basically just put our clothes there and there. Mm. Okay? If I need to cook, I just cook at the door here. I use stove for cooking. Yeah. And we share this with the community. Mm. Because currently the price of um, mm. paraffin or kerosene is expensive. It's expensive. And therefore, um, especially when you have kids or when you have a family, mm. it's expensive. It's not yes. easy. And you have to save a lot. Mm. So this is just a mud facility. What is just outside there, when you look at the floor outside there, it's just similar to what is inside here. Yeah. Then the difference is that we put down the carpet to cut the dust. Then when you look at the, sorry, when you look at the walls, mm, it's just mud, mud mm, facility. Deep. Then you need to do the covering around for two reasons, mm. to make the house cozy. Mm. Then number two, for privacy reasons. Yeah. Because behind that wall, behind that wall, behind yeah, that people. wall, there are people. Mm -hmm. And sometimes black people could spy, you mm. know, in a space. That's mm. why it would be the covering ground. Mm -hmm. The roofing itself is made from corrugated zinc mm -hmm. and it's not in good shape. That's why I didn't need to put this plastic cover underneath yeah. the roofing to act as a coolant. So when it's hot, yeah, it's a little bit cold. And then number two, this is to minimize the amount of raining water coming down if it's raining. Because if it rains, it really gets bad inside here. Okay? So this house that you see, I don't, in, I don't own it, neither did my parents own it. When they moved from the rural home, they welcomed here by some people mm -hmm. who are going to disclose to you in a short while to live here. Mm -hmm. So now they've been paying rent, the same amounts I'm also doing. Mm -hmm. So, so you, each you month, pay rent, yes? yes, I pay. Mm -hmm. I pay 2,300 Kenyan shillings per month. Per month. 2,000 is for the rent, 3 is for electricity. Mm -hmm. We need electricity here for domestic consumption. Mm -hmm. Okay? And um, that house that is on the other side, mm -hmm. the owners there pay $30 every month, or 3,000 Kenyan shillings mm -hmm. rather. 
because that is cement and this is not, but it's just of similar size. Uh -huh. Then average family size, um, five people living in a space like this. And uh, sometimes the number could be huge, six, seven, eight, or even ten people. So in a situation whereby, for example, the family size is so huge, what happens? Neighbors will always go to their neighbors to ask space where the kids could be taking a nap. Mm. The same also applies to food. If the food is limited, chances are you can always go to your neighbor. If they have surplus food, you share. Mm. So today, we are a sharing community. If there is success story, it is for all. If there is challenge again, it is mm. for all. There is what we call social protection here. Mm. I watch your back, watch my back, we mm. protect each other. Yes. Then, uh, even in Kibera here, there is what we call um, on the street, people know each other by names. Mm. So if people know each other by names on the street, what does it mean? It means they are confident, they feel secure, mm. such that, for example, if something bad is to happen to them, mm. it is easy to tell or trace yeah. the culprits. Mm. Okay? So when you go to the CBD Nairobi, the capital city, when you look at that factor, they are lacking that. Yeah. As much as it's a good town, it's a city, this is an informal settlement, but we have that here, the unlike them there. The community. Exactly. Mm. You know? Integration is so much well. Mm. So. A typical home in Kibera guys look like this. The size is supposed to be 4 by 4 meters. Mm. So talk about 16 meters squared. Mm. That is the size of this facility. Okay? Mm -hmm. And um, around all these areas, we have got almost over 100 households. Then we have got almost uh, two there's toilets. School, there's school, yeah? Yes, there's schools here. Yeah. School. We have two toilets. Mm. But it's a shared facility, so we have to queue. Yeah, Sometimes it's not in good shape. Sometimes you have to go somewhere to pay some money for you to access this. Wow. So now, when you talk about Kebera, mm. uh, Kebera actually it's a Nubian word, meaning jungle or forest. Mm. Nubians are kind of dialects or tribes, are from Nuba Mountain in Sudan, others are from Egypt. Mm. Before any other person came to Kebera here, the Nubians were the first to have inhabited Kebera here. Mm. And you know Kenya is a British colony. Yeah. So when the British army or government were here doing their endeavors, mm. they got lots of resistance from the local people. Mm. Now the only option for them was to mobilize the Nubians, especially their men, mm. to train them to be soldiers, to help to, to assist them actually in their mission here. My history tells me this is supposed to be almost over 80 years mm. back. So when the Nubians came here, they did not have a lot of technical know-how, they did not have a lot of resources to help them actually build something better. Yeah. So in any particular area that they found some space, mm. they had to build some structures or households for themselves, and maybe later on for rental. Mm. Then uh, in 1963, when Kenya got her independence, the first regime or the first government of Kenya when it came into power, they found the Nubians here. So the Nubians have been living here all along to, uh, to this extent. Now, the government of Kenya could not do anything about reclaiming the land, maybe to develop it and give it to the, to the majority of the people. So there was lack city of, from that and also lack of good political will and lack of visionary leadership. If those two factors maybe were put in place, Maybe Kibera could be uh, just Better different place. today, yeah. you know. Now this is the repercussion. So now when you focus on the population of the people living in Kibera, mm. you cannot like get the correct figure, but um, rough approximation, it is roughly uh, between half a million people to almost 700,000 people living in Kibera right now. Mm. And this is not my words, this is from the government figures of the counting, mm. which was done recently from the census. And then uh, the size of Kibera is supposed to be around uh, between 3 to 3.5 square kilometer. Mm. And Kibera itself is located uh, 7 kilometers away from the city center. Then we are a cosmopolitan area. We have got uh, over 45 dialects mm. or tribes here. Then we have refugees from Burundi, Rwanda, Sudan, Congo, Zaire, and even West Africans are mm. here. And then we are uh, multi faith. Talk about Christianity, it's the most popular religion here, Islam. Mm also and also some indigenous churches mm -hmm. are found in Kibera. Then um, we integrate so much well as much as we enjoy our different cultures. Mm -hmm. You know we don't segregate, uh, we don't fight. Then Kibera is made up of 14 villages. When you put these villages together it gives you Kibera. Mm -hmm. Number one is Makina. So right now we are in Makina village. Mm -hmm. Then we have got Karanja, Olympic, Ayani and Fort Jesus. So Karanja, Ayani, Olympic and Fort Jesus the four these are the best villages yeah, of Kibera. Fort Jesus has to do with Mombasa. Yes. Okay, yeah. So, uh, the four villages, Karanja, Ayani Olympic, and Fort Jesus, these are the best villages of Kibera. Yeah. So what does best mean or how does best look like? Best means the streets are clean, they are big, they are huge. 
a few people, most of the people living within those areas of that proximity mm. are presumed to be the rich people of Kibera. Mm. People with a good salary scale or people who do their job which is consistent mm. and it is earning them. Mm. And uh, then you have got Gatokera, Silanga, Soweto East, Soweto West, Lenisaba, Kichinjio, Mashimoni, Kambimuru, Raila Village and Kianda. You put all this together, it gives you Kibera. Mm. We don't have logos or uh, rather street. the street address yeah, no street to distinguish address. between area A or yeah. area B. But because I was born here, raised here, school here, mm. and doing my endeavors here, mm. I understand my orientation well, yes. and I'm capable of taking it to each village, perhaps to tell you success stories, challenges, and mm. uh, events for the Then I started Exactly. Work. Yeah. Exactly. Then, um, when you look at the, tra the economy of Kibera is trade, mm. alongside it, we say the street people do things, they sell products, mm. they could sell food, clothes, different stuff. In Kibera here, you don't have a place to grow or plant crops. So basically everything that you consume must come from outside. Mm -hmm. So we have got uh, shopkeepers, wholesalers and retailers mm -hmm. on behalf of the community. They go to the city center to get those stuffs in large quantity. Mm -hmm. They bring them here, subdivide and pack them to small quantities to allow the majority of the people here to access. Because a typical person in Kibera, they either live within one or two dollars in a day. Mm -hmm. Okay? And therefore someone at least has to bridge the gap for them to feel good, mm -hmm. for them to access like a small quantities of food that they need mm. to feel all right, to bridge the gap. Mm. Then if people don't do trade, what do they do? Casual laborers. These are people like cooks, security guards, gardeners. And most of these people, they work outskirts of Kibera. Whatever they do is just hand to mouth jobs. Yeah. What do they earn? They earn roughly between 50 to almost 100 US dollars every month. So this money they have to pay rent, they have to pay schooling and other things. It's not enough. And most of them are families. Exactly. Then we have, uh, we have civil servants, teachers, nurses and doctors. Mm -hmm. Some of them have uh, what it takes to deserve the job, but some of them probably they're given these jobs because of some influence or connection, corruption issues, you know? So the many that are working for the government side, they no longer live here, they live outside of Kibera. They feel that uh, probably work here, mm -hmm. some of them could be living in the good areas that I just mentioned. Yeah. Then uh, in terms of uh, security, here in Kibera, we have got almost. Um, Kibera is it safe? Very safe today. It's safe. Today it's safe. And like what do the critics safe. think? Yeah. You know, it's, coming, it's, coming to Kibera, we had a lot of stuff. But yeah. You know, Those are just critics. In fact, my friends, I want to assure you today, for example, it is not because I live in Kibera, that's why I say it's safe. Yeah. Today, if you compare Kibera to other areas, like the CBD, or even America, yeah. I tell you Kibera itself. So because it's an informal settlement, it does not mean all is lost. It could be probably lack of opportunities, but we have got so much talent, we have got so much potential here. We have some energy which is here, which is not tapped. Immediately if it is tapped or recognized, probably one that is going to happen. Where do people find it? A lot. Like, would they just come to want to arrest you or steal from you or ask for like things that to like make intimidate you? No, probably like you know, just like any other marketplace. Yes. You have got the good and the bad. It's yes, just all over the country. Yes. So probably it could happen, but in general, it is just safe. It's safe. Yes. So uh, these police stations are here mm. to make sure that there is law and order, mm. and uh, the kind of crime now to answer your question better mm. that is happening in Kibera today is a normal crime that mm. basically could just happen elsewhere. What's normal crime? Shoplifting. Okay. People go to the shops to steal, pickpocketing. Maybe at night they could break into people's homes to steal. Mm. Why do they steal? Because they're hungry, right? They're hungry. They have no opportunities. No jobs, yeah. So if there are jobs for them, it means they're not going to steal. They're mm. going to be occupied. Mm. If they're found doing that by the community, what will happen? The community is going to gang against them, beat them. If it's their last day, probably they're going to be touched or burned completely into ashes until they die. So the community will take the loss into their hands. Maybe they don't trust the police. Mm. Or maybe they're trying to send some strong message or warning outside there. That if there is anybody again who dares to steal from the community, he or she is going to suffer the same fate mm. as their person. The other person. So now the people are scared. And um, the drugs that are here, you know, the weed, right? Mm. Weed is common in Kibera here. Then we have got um, some sniffing substances like glue. Mm. Then we have got some kind of traditional liquor or alcohol which is not made through some good process, but through some very bad chemical process. They put lots of methanol in it. Once people take this, they go blind or they have health issues. Okay, so those are the, some of the drugs that we have here. When you compare to the Esther years, 10 years back, 20 years back, honestly speaking, yes. For all the reasons, Kibera was known for that. 
but things change. You know, nothing actually stays permanent. People change. Mm -hmm. People transform. Mm -hmm. And uh, back then, yes, we could have some kind of organized gangs, mm -hmm. militia groups, terrorizing the community. Mm -hmm. But now, things are better because of reformations, because of schooling, because of networking, because of technologies, because of religion. Mm -hmm. They are now turning these things from destruction to construction. From destructive to constructiveness. Okay? And um, here in Kibera, I understand that uh, many people do not have medical insurance cover. So if someone gets sick, maybe complex disease, surgery, diabetes, or cancer, they're on their own. Now the community will come together to raise money to help. And, um, Is there a community leader? Yes, of course, we have the village elders. Then, um, if someone dies in Kibera here, because of cultural beliefs, uh, bodies are not interred or buried in Kibera here. Neither do we do, neither do we cremate bodies here. Mm. So it means if a person dies, they have to take him to the rural home. So before that happens, the people will come together to raise money to facilitate the transportation of the beloved one to the rural home. That's why people prefer to to live here. Here, probably others could be having families, they could be having friends, they could have been schooling here, they could also be working on the streets, that's why they prefer to live here. Others could live here because of poverty. Probably as much as they want to get something better, but they are not like, a, you know, they don't have financial stability. It's, uh, it's tough for them, they but cannot live here. You, personally, you are living here because you want to live here. It's your personal choice. I don't, I don't know how to answer that, but um, maybe you can look at it from both sides. Why are you still here? If, if someone asks you that question. Yeah, why am I still why, here? Why are you still here? I'm still here, number one, because of um, probably whatever I do currently, I, the choice is for the living. It is not sustainable. It is, it is not really progressive. It is not sustainable, I mean. And uh, not consistent. For you to go to another area or for you to invest in something, it should be consistent. Mm -hmm. We only about the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Why not for the pandemic, maybe things could be different today. Mm -hmm. Look at it this way. Maybe I made some money through savings. Yeah. But when the pandemic came, I was not working. I have a family. I have bills to pay. Where would I get that money from? Okay. Okay. It's tough. So the small that I had to save, I had to utilize that. If you ever get the opportunity to move out of Kida, are you going to take it? Do you think you want to move or you just believe you love your community? You well, I'm not going to move away from Kibera mm -hmm. because I believe my mission of empowerment is not yet over. Mm -hmm. Today, for example, if all of us have an opportunity, then we leave Kibera, mm -hmm. now we'll be here mm -hmm. to see to it that Kibera change. So you're here for a purpose now? I'm here for a purpose. Mm -hmm. That's the purpose behind it. That's exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Because I want to be that change. Yeah. I want to be part of that history when it's made. Yeah, man driven by vision exactly and mission exactly so, yeah. kibera has given me a lot of opportunity mm -hmm. so how am i going to give back to kibera if i'm going to be here to do whatever i can do that's it i know probably getting or giving 100 percent transition is difficult yeah. but even just two percent it's okay today for example if i'm seated here tomorrow if i can sit where you are mm -hmm. i call that success everything's about the mindset you know so when all these little things is done together that is progress yeah. You know, and success, people perceive success in different ways. Mm -hmm. Maybe to others, success could be money, mm -hmm. it could be fancy things, it could be the big cars, mm -hmm. it could be the big cities. Mm -hmm. To others, success could be touching lives, it could be about the people, mm -hmm. you know. Then, tomorrow for example, when we are gone, how, how would you want us to be, remind, to be remembered? We are less maybe they will be remembered for being presidents, mm -hmm. prime ministers, queens and kings. But so what? What impact have they left to their communities? Whereas probably you can get someone here, they are not like international, internationally recognized, mm -hmm. but there are some things that they are doing to touch lives there at the grassroots level. And those people who live there who are not recognized, mm -hmm. who are depressed, they recognize him. So that is success. So what success to you? Success is touching lives. Touching it is giving back. It is sharing whatever we have with others. So that's what you're doing right now. Exactly. So will you say you're a successful man? Pardon? Will you say you're a successful man? Exactly. So you're a successful man? Exactly. That's great. Yeah, exactly. That's great. Fifty men. You're fulfilled. Exactly. 
So what's the, what's the story behind your write-ups? So the story behind the writing sub actually is just to, uh, these are inspirational writings to... You did these things yourself? Yes, I did these things myself. Some of them I've got it somewhere, yeah. some of them they're mine. And uh, this is just basically to remind me of my purpose, my mission here, and just to motivate me, to encourage wow. me, to do whatever I'm still doing, mm -hmm. and never to lose hope, never to give up. And above everything, it's about the people. So it is uh, the best way yes. of finding oneself yes. to lose oneself in service for others. Right. That's, that's, that's powerful. Right. Yeah. So, um, about health, we've got almost over 60 clinics and mm -hmm. over 100 pharmacists or chemists in Kibera. Mm -hmm. The fact that this is a lot, it is not free. Mm -hmm. uh, most of these medical services, they don't belong to the government, but they belong to the private institutions, mm -hmm. corporate organization, faith-based organizations, philanthropists, etc., etc. Yeah. When you go to the government hospitals in Kibera, they are few and very much overwhelmed. You have to queue very early in the morning. So chances are, maybe before they reach you, mm -hmm. the doctors or the medics are tired, or maybe they've gone home, or sometimes they run out of medicine. Mm. Then uh, some of the medical programs you get in Kibera here are VCT, mm. Voluntary Casting and Testing Center. Mm. The people are found to be HIV positive. They are given therapy free of charge. Which places are we visiting now after this? I'm coming to that. Mm. So then uh, we have malaria treatment is free. Mm. Therapy for the kids is also free. Mm. Then uh, complex diseases like surgery, cancer, you have to uh, pay That's for that. We also have traditional medication here. Okay. For those who don't believe in scientific medication, they can get I their herbs. Yes. yes. Okay. Then um, politics. It's funny. We have a presentation of course. Of course. Yes. In the state. We don't vote a person here because of ideologies. Okay. But we used to vote a person because of tribe nepotism. Okay. Yes. Probably if Moses wants to be a leader and maybe belong to the minority tribe, I told you about number. Hmm. But I'm happy that slowly by slowly things are changing. Yeah. It is not about what I eat, what I believe in, or what I wear, or my faith or my religion. What counts is the content of character. Mm -hmm. If I have whatever it takes, even if I come from the minority tribe, I believe I can be a leader. You know? Mm -hmm. So people want quick satisfaction without merits. People are hungry right now, they have no food. They have not paid rent, their kids are not in school. Mm -hmm. Maybe they are living in very poor conditions. They have no bathroom, they have no water. Mm -hmm. Now, if a politician comes to give them such kind of things immediately, mm -hmm. chances are they are going to vote for him or her. How about sustainability? How about long-term thing? For many people here, it's not about tomorrow. It's not about future. Mm -hmm. It's about today, it's about right now. Because for a long time, they've always been promised about the future, which never comes. So for them, they prefer to be given it now. So now the politicians will come to give it now. Then the people will take it. So in other, in other words, they're responsible for making the mess. Then on the other hand, they want to solve the mess that they've created. You know? So we have to talk about long-term impact of something. Probably at the moment it's going to take time for reality to be realized. But again, if we have like the rightful investment, the right attitude, the right, the right mindset, and if our people are enlightened, it's going to be better because, again, leadership is not about oneself. It's about the people. It's about service to the people. If our people are enlightened, it means they can be able to hold our leaders accountable. Okay. But as it is right now, you find that um, it's a mixed reaction. There are those who are enlightened, there are those who are not enlightened. There are those they cannot make informed decisions. They are just waiting for others to decide for them, which we all know is not the right thing to do. But again, all is not lost because over 65% of our population here are the young guys. They go to schools, to universities and colleges. Mm -hmm. And I want to believe probably, uh, give it time, maybe 10, 20 or 30 years time to come, they will be in these political positions to provide the kind of leadership that they want to see. Mm -hmm. So here we have the village elders, religious leaders, area chief, a member of county assembly, then the member for parliament for Kibera. If a person here attains the age of 18 years, they could always go outside there and elect the leadership. Now, do you ever want to go into politics? Not now. For the community. Not now. But Maybe in the near future. In the near future, right? Yes. I want to go to politics. I want to lead the people who can be able to hold me accountable. I want to lead the people who can know probably how to make informed choices or decisions, who mm. can read and write. 
Those are the things that we have to fight for. And you want to help your community. Exactly. Yeah. Then probably politics will be later. Mm -hmm. Such that uh, today if I run to politics, chances are maybe I'm not going to, yeah. you know, yeah. and even give back. Yeah. So for you to give back, you have at least to yeah. do something. So whether, whether I go to politics, whether I win or I don't win, what is important is the people. And I believe we are all leaders in, in our own capacities. Mm -hmm. You know, even from the position side, or even from the government side, mm -hmm. we can still deliver to the people. So long as uh, we have the interest of the people in our hearts, we can always do that. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. So when you talk about now education, we have uh, two types of education in Kibera. You have formal and informal. So formal is under the government of Kenya. The government is really trying its best to provide quality education to the community. I'm happy that uh, today we have got uh, almost uh, over eight public primary schools in Kibera and also over eight public high schools in Kibera. Yet? Are they free? They're not free. No. To some extent, they tell you it's free. Yeah, there is some money which the government pays, but again, for you to admit your child there, there is some money you have to pay. Because there is money for uniform, maybe fooding programs. Oh, nice. So it depends. Mm. Okay? Mm. Now, um, government schools in Kibera are in a very good space. Mm. The buildings are nice. Yeah, nice. The infrastructure is okay. Really. Better than your time. Yes, better than my time. Then uh, I understand that even government schools, they have qualified teachers. Mm. So they are, the qualified teachers, they give a quality education. Yes. Problem in the government school is congestion. And by congestion, I'm focusing on ratio. So probably like one teacher attending to almost 90 oh. or 100 kids. Wow. The criteria for a child to go to government school it is first come, first serve. So, for example, in Kibera Primary School is targeting like um, maybe 2,000 kids. Mm -hmm. So, if they get the number, that's it. that's it. Now, where the rest of the kids go to, automatically it means they are going to look at the space within the informal or private schools in Kibera. So, as it is right now, we have got uh, over almost um, 200 informal schools in Kibera. Symbolically, they look like people's homes. Mm -hmm. Some of them are registered within the government systems. Some of them are not registered. This schools, sometimes if it rains, because it doesn't rain always here, yeah. and uh, it's difficult to access the schools. But in a very poor environment, the infrastructure is not good. Yeah. Some schools have no bathroom. Now it means that the teachers, staff, and the kids will always hide behind the classes for them to relieve themselves. These schools, again, can never qualify the teachers. Mm -hmm. So they go for the low-level teachers because they lack resources. Question is, what can someone who calls themselves a teacher, they are not qualified, what kind of content can they give to kids? I always relate children to be like a piece of sponge. You put a piece of sponge in the water, it will absorb water. Similarly, kids behave that way. Any content you tell them, it sticks inside here. If it's good, it's going to be good for them, good for the community, good for the country. But if it's going to be bad, we know the repercussions. Some of the schools in Kibera here do not teach kids on how to understand the topics, but they teach them how to memorize things. The role of education primarily is for transformation. Apart from like going to school and getting the good grades, the question is, how can I convert those good grades into something that is going to probably impact the lives of the people? Because we go to school, then we have to go back to our communities to do something. And if we all wait for the government to come and initiate projects indeed, nothing is going to happen. Okay? So, yes, as much as kids could be going to school here in Kibera, the ones who go to these informal schools, chances are maybe they cannot like get quality education. So at the end of the day, then it's difficult to transform themselves and that of their community. Okay? Then when you talk about transportation, coming to Kibera you can use Uber, you can use taxi. You can use the tuk-tuk or the three-wheeled uh, vehicles. Then we have got the buses or the matatus. They get you to Kibera. Then we also have the passenger train or commuter train. Commuter train collects people in the morning from a place called Limuru. It's outskirts of Kibera. Actually, it's in Kikuyu to Kibera, then to the CBD. From Monday to Friday, five days in a week. Early in the morning, late in the evening. Saturday and Sunday, you cannot see the passenger train, but you can just see some cargo train transporting goods locally or at international level. So for the commuter train that I'm talking about, 
Here in Kibera, we, have, we don't have clear stations, but we have got like roughly three designated points where the train will stop for the locals to come out, then for the non-locals, the train will proceed on. When we compare train transport to other means of transportation, train transport is much cheaper. And at least uh, many people can access this. The fact that again it goes through people's homes, it is much easier for the locals probably to get onto it, then they're going to be dropped at their doorsteps, unlike the roads. The roads are expensive, depending on the rush hour. If, so, uh, the, if there's a lot of traffic now, chances are the price is going to, to rise. Yeah, yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. The same means of transportation that I'm talking about, I understand that it was built in 1902. That is the train track road by the British government, some Africans and Indians lives. Today it connects Kenya to Uganda, so goods from Kenya can be able to reach Uganda and vice versa. Nice. Then alternatively, people don't have money, they can just talk to their place of work. Because when you look at our geography, Kibera is centrally positioned, we are in the middle of Nairobi. Surrounded by areas like Karen Blixen Museum, Nairobi the CBD, then um, the city centre and also the shopping mall. So it's much easier for the people to work their place of work. Maybe the small money that they have, they can save that to buy food or probably something else. Okay? So, I've spoken a lot. I believe I've given you the yes. basics of Kibera. And uh, you've heard it from the host, also from a local living here. You've not heard this from documentaries or from books. Probably outside could be true and true or probably exaggerated. Mm -hmm. And I always tell the people that if you want to understand a particular area, okay. you go there. Don't read books. Mm -hmm. Probably something, some things could be on the social media mm -hmm. which could be outdated. So when you read that, you get wrong impression of that particular area. But if you go there, chances are maybe it's going to transform you, it's going to change your attitudes. Probably towards the people there, towards that community, and probably now start to realize. Uh, Indeed, uh, uh, it's not the way people think about Kibera. Okay, we have potential, we have energy here, we have got brilliant minds here. What we just like is opportunities. But if there are opportunities, I believe, things are going to get better. We have had working people here. In fact, when you look at Nairobi, the CBD, a lot of labor force comes from Kibera. So today, for example, if all the people of Kibera are taken away from the place of work or from Nairobi, then chances are the country is not going to do well in terms of uh, the GDP because they need this labor to develop the country. So now you've seen a typical home in Kibera. Yeah. And um, this is how people live their lives basically. And um, you can put yourself in their position just to imagine whatever they go through. You can compare my life here and abroad or anywhere else. I know in life people have challenges. Yeah. But what count is how do you perceive these challenges? You know, there are those probably will be there. They wait for the government intervention, which the government never shows up. And there are those actually will be there. At least they are doing something, some efforts. As much as they are hurting, as much as probably the living conditions could be poor, but they are doing some things to turn things around. So what do we learn? We learn always to be grateful in life for either small or big things that we have, because chances are somebody somewhere is not as lucky as we are. Okay? Yeah. So, maybe in the near future again, if another opportunity presents itself, and you feel that you want to visit some family, know that our door or my door is quite open to have you here Definitely. again and again. Definitely. The physical space could be limited, but for us it's not about the space, it's about what is here and here that you can all share. What, what, what's your vision for Kibera? Well, I want to see a Kibera whereby people will be having clean water, they'll be having access to the basic needs like food, mm -hmm. sanitation and clothing. Mm -hmm. I want to see an opportunity for every child to go to school. Mm -hmm. After they finish the school, mm -hmm. for those who are good in book work, probably they can pursue their careers. Mm -hmm. And for those who are not good in book, probably they can be enrolled yeah. in tertiary institutions for them to nurture their skills, such that again, if they come back outside here, they can be able even to build their country. It will be possible. It will be possible. The little efforts that we are doing today, it's going to count in the near future. So let little step at a time. If you can do something, do it. If I can do it, let's do it. You never know. Somebody somewhere is watching, yeah. or somebody somewhere, their life is being touched. Maybe tomorrow, They'll be proud of us. So you'll be 
believe Kibera will be great again. Definitely. I believe so too. So. Yeah. That's great. That's great. You should take you should take more uh, positions in government. Like go for power. Try try to do something <laughs> in the future. Hopefully, hopefully. Try to. It could be the change that Kibera needs. Hopefully. Do you know that you can be the change Kibera needs? Of course. Of course. Kibera needs you. Of course. So give them yourself. This is already a way of you serving your community by right. doing this. Right. So maybe you should. The next level for you is the right. next level. Right. One step at a time. Right. Thank you so much for your time. Welcome. <laughs>